Good low frequency reproduction in the living or listening room doesn't come easy. Although there are several ways to improve lows, in the end a bass step might be needed to achieve a true tight bass. But these bulky contraptions take space and need consent from the aesthetics committee. Up till now that is. Since low frequencies contain far more energy than mid and high frequencies, and since their wavelengths are in the region of room dimensions, several problems occur. Therefore loudspeaker placement is of paramount importance. Don't think you can calculate the correct position for loudspeakers unless you use a model that includes all properties of your furniture, walls, curtains and so on. And even then professional acquisitions lean on experience more than on modelling. That is why I dreamed up my two step approach to loudspeaker placement. See my video 001 Loudspeaker Placement Long Version. In that video you will learn how to place loudspeakers in two steps. First find the best position for low frequency reproduction and then locate and treat the early reflections for the mids and the highs that have great influence on the stereo image and tonal balance. Only when the best position has been established, further measures can be taken to improve lows. Loudspeaker cabinets have mechanical vibrations despite what manufacturers say. These vibrations will also potentially set a wooden floor in motion, even if it is a thin layer of wood over a concrete floor like I have. The motions are minute but over a larger part of the floor and do have influence on the sound quality. Spring and damper feet can isolate the speaker from the floor if they are correctly designed for the weight of the speaker but they allow for movement of the speaker which will influence transients and stereo image. They do give better lows though. A more all round solution are feet that absorb the vibrations while having a firm contact between the speaker and the floor, like the stack audio OVAS I use in all three of my setups. But there is room for further improvement. In my listening room, in the attic, where my setup 2 and 3 are located, there is a small loft of a half the depth of the room. That is where I store the empty boxes of my equipment. These function as a large bass trap. Against the left and right wall, on the level the speakers are positioned, are IKEA Kallax shelving units holding vinyl records, CDs, DVDs and Blu-rays. These form a proper mix between absorption and scattering of the mids and highs. Furthermore, monitor speakers on stands with overfeed are used here while a small rail subwoofer takes care of the real lows. That could be placed at the best spot for the lows. And given the equipment used, the expectations are lower than for my setup 1. Watch my video about my reference setups May 2023 for more information on my three setups. Setup 1 is situated in the living room, where some limitations are imposed by the aesthetics committee. By carefully applying my two step approach, the isolator feed, high quality equipment and a bit of luck, I managed to get a rather good result. Only the deep lows show some room resonances that muddy the sound to some degree. Here no feed with empty boxes and separate sub, while the PMCs just as well go down to 26 Hz. The answer here would be to build a wideband bass trap. Exactly tuned bass traps are no solution since they would take far too much space. But even a wideband bass trap was too much for the aesthetics committee, understandably so by the way. Then I came across the PSI AVA C214 active bass trap. The PSI AVA C214 is cylinder shaped measuring 210 mm in diameter and 640 mm high. It weighs 11.1 kilos and stands on rubber feet. The front has a mesh grille, the sides are closed and on the rear there is a recessed panel with, mounted against it, a small box that on top holds two buttons that are normally used for gain plus and minus 
but have double functions in combination with the power switch. That is situated on the bottom of that box where also the IEC mains inlet is situated. The principle of this base strap is simple. A microphone measures the air pressure variations between 15 and 160 Hz in front of the AVA. When room resonances appear in that spectrum, the two 40 cm drivers in the AVA move in a way that these pressure increments are reduced, like if the wall locally moves backwards. Although this sounds like a simple technique, it is quite a feat and two switch universities have been directly or indirectly involved. Imagine the spectrum from 15 to 160 Hz has to be monitored and while a resonance like behaviour occurs, it has to be counteracted against. Luckily resonances take a short while to build up and react on a stimulus, a bass tone in the music. But still it is a kind of magic to me. PSI emphasis that it doesn't work with anti sound, sound with the opposed polarity. The original sound is not affected. It rather is a black hole for excessive pressure. PSI states the following on their website. By lowering the acoustic impedance of the air in front of it, the EVA effectively sucks in low frequencies over an area of about 1 to 1.5 meters. As a result, the optimal position for an EVA is in the most rigid corners of the room, where the pressure is the highest and the room modes are most present. Sounds great, so I contacted local distributor Helios Pro Audio Solutions for a review sample. I was granted two. Time to see what it does in my setup one. The ground floor of my house measures 9.85 by 5.21 meters and the ceiling is 2.58 meters high. It is divided into half by an acoustically rather open calyx separation. On one side of this separation is the hall, stairway and kitchen, on the other side the living part. So half wavelengths matching these dimensions are 17.2, 32.7 and 65.9 Hz. The harmonics of the first two come rather close to the third at 65.4 and 68.8 Hz. Nevertheless, even at the couch opposite to the speakers, which is against the wall, lows are quite good. Despite just in front of the walls, there is an increase of bass since the reflected bass adds up to the direct bass. During test sessions I always sit on one third of the room, but for the rest I sit against the wall. Luckily the bass increment is more than acceptable. The equipment used is the core of reference setup 1, the Air Acoustics AX520 that drives the PMC FAC 12 signature loudspeakers on stack audio over 70 isolators and connected over AudioQuest Robinhood Zero loudspeaker cable. The front of the loudspeakers are 96 cm from the wall they are in front of and are only a few degrees towed in. The core DAVE is connected to the amp over Grim Audio SQM XLR cables. Since the Grim Audio Mu1 is sold and I am waiting for the Grim Audio Mu2, I use the Magna Mano MK3 Farad network player running Rupi XL that was connected to the cord over the network acoustics Mu1 XLR cable. Both the Core Dave and the Magna Mano receive power over a transparent power isolator 8. The Magna was connected to the Zixel router over the network acoustics Muon Pro system that cleans up the Ethernet signal. As said, the floor is a thin layer of oak on a damping mat on concrete. There are quite a few large plants around the living and, and three small side tables. There is no carpeting. The AVA performs best where the sound pressure is highest. Using an SPL measuring app on my iPhone, the free DB music app, I looked for the highest reading in the room. The app is particularly handy since it shows both A weighted and C weighted sound pressure level, SPL for short. For this measurement you can use either reading. P 
PSI indicates that in most cases corners near the loudspeakers are often where the sound pressure level will be highest, which was the case in my situation. I have only one real corner next to the right loudspeaker. The one near the left speaker is not really a corner for low frequencies since the cupboard under the stairs is only 83 cm deep. Remember, a 160 Hz sound wave is already 2.1 meters long, while a 15 Hz sound wave is 22.7 meters long. Lows won't see that cupboard, the sound waves will simply fold around it. So I place one Eva in the corner near the right speaker connected to the grid and linked my iPhone to it. As mentioned, you can also control the Eva with small knobs at the rear of the unit but using the free app is a lot easier. And then I play some music. Right out of the box, switching the Eva on and off, it was almost impossible to hear what it did. So I wanted a low tone to play that would excite my room. I used On The Run from the Pink Floyd album Delicate Sound of Thunder, the 2019 remix from Tidal. From 10 seconds to 20 seconds in, it has a deep loud sound. Playing that section, I switch on the Eva, pause the music and listen to the sound dying out. I repeated that with the Eva switched off. Then increased the gain of the Eva and did the same test over again. I had to set the gain at 6 which is the maximum to get a very good result. With the Eva switched on, the sound died out directly after the music was paused while there was a short tail with the Eva switch off. The vague low level frequency energy surrounding the music also disappeared when the Eva was switched on. I never noticed this earlier but now that was killed by the Eva, it was clearly audible when the Eva was switched off. Since Helios sent me two Eva's, I unpacked the second one, linked it to my iPhone and placed it on one side of the couch against the wall. Then I repeated the aforementioned protocol, but that didn't give further effects. Not too strange since the result with only one was already good. Still I tried positions at the other side of the couch and next to the left speaker. I even placed the second one on top of the first, they seemed to be designed for that. But dry is dry and admittedly for reasons I don't fully understand, the RT60 for Lowe's wasn't that bad from the start. The Eva brings relaxation in the sound. The Lowe's have more texture, sound more open. But the mid-range also gains in resolution to a certain extent. The overall sound is less fatiguing while the sound without the Eva was already very good. I can assure you the Eva is going to be a permanent addition to my setup one, while I thought I would not invest in it anymore. And on that bombshell we come to the end of this video. As usual there will be a new video next Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to my channel or follow me on Facebook so you will be informed when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to this video on Facebook, Instagram or LinkedIn. It's much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you next week. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.